Okay, so welcome to the afternoon sessions. Uh, great pleasure to introduce uh, Abresh Klem from uh, Bonn University. He's going to tell us about Calabria periods in QFT, string theory, and general relativity. Okay, so thank you very much for the invitation to speak here. And uh, <clears throat> it's, a, it's, of course, a great pleasure to be back in Trieste. Um, <clears throat> so my talk will... I don't know how long it is ago that you calculated Feynman graphs, but I'm sure you know where they are good for. So I don't repeat that. Uh, <clears throat> but the uh, talk is, uh, I'm not very long in this area. That, um, <clears throat> so basically, um, I started with some students, and, uh, and then it turns out that these Calabiao periods are uh, very important, and then I could work with really people that from the Feynman graph communities have a lot uh, of better ideas about the subjects than me. Uh, but it's basically divided in uh, three topics. So the blue ones is about quantum field theory. Then uh, also this red one is a quantum field theory. This one is more like an application to a um, symmetry, a Youngian symmetry problem that comes from ADS-CFT. And the last one is about the, um, <coughs> is about the um, <coughs> uh, uh, scattering of black holes. So the, um, <clears throat> the idea is basically that uh, period motifs in Calabiao manifolds we have studied a lot in string three, and uh, in particular in mirror symmetry in the B model. And, uh, <clears throat> and so uh, we know a lot about them, and uh, <clears throat> we realize that they have new applications to uh, these uh, problems in amplitudes and Feynman graphs. And uh, I organized them in the following way, the talk. So the first is an amplitude evaluation in systems with Youngian integrable systems, uh, symmetries. Um, so that comes basically from N equal 4 super Young Mills theory and uh, <coughs> has been uh, formulated in a simpler fashion in, in fishnet uh, series. And then the next thing is uh, basically evaluation of, um, of amplitudes, uh, of uh, Feynman graphs in uh, in normal quantum field theory, generic quantum field theory, no supersymmetry is implied here. And that is, uh, so to say, important for new uh, precision tests, maybe um, at, at collider physics. And then the last topic is, uh, is uh, even more strange. It's a completely classical problem. You want to uh, consider the scattering of two black holes, real black holes, like we have the in-spiraling that you measure with LIGO, the gravitational waves. And you, um, you have also a quantum field seed um, approach to it in the post minkowskian uh, approximation. And you also see Calabiao um, motives coming up in this uh, context. So um, <clears throat> let me uh, sort of start uh, with an observation that comes basically from this graph. So this graph is kind of a self-energy. And, uh, <clears throat> and it's um, called the banana graph. And um, so basically, it. Uh, 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 it is, has um, <coughs> L minus uh, L loops. <coughs> and, uh, and to this banana graph in the first paper, we could associate periods of a Calabiao, and this is a period of the Calabiao, is a complete intersection in a bunch of L plus 1 uh, P1s. And, uh, <coughs> and then uh, you intersect it in, e you have two hypersurface constraints, so it's a complete intersection in each, which are of degree one in each of the P1s. So that's a Calabiao. And it turns out that the complex deformation parameters of this Calabiao are given by the masses over the momentum, so it's a scale invariant quantity. And uh, it so turned out that, for instance, if you take the limit that the masses are zero, or the momentum is very uh, large, then you get uh, to the mum point of the Calabiao. And then you can, for instance, see that the Feynman graph is the maximal degenerating period of this Calabiao. So it's, um, this uh, is here summarized a little bit. So the observation, it's an example, but the observation uh, was more general that uh, one loop graphs basically uh, are rational functions. And then two loop graphs, that would be the sunset graph, if you just have three propagators in this banana graph, they are elliptic functions. And then you see already the elliptic curve here uh, <clears throat> on the right hand side. And then three loop graphs are families of K3. That is really true for this graph. And then uh, higher loop, um, four loop graphs are Calabiao threefolds, and so on and so forth. And uh, <clears throat> this is. Uh, <clears throat> Um, for the maximal cut graph of this, uh, but the full Feynman graph has actually uh, boundary conditions. So the, 
uh, it has to uh, fulfill an inhomogeneous differential equation. Uh, <coughs> but um, the observation also is not particularly original on you. It was maybe uh, goes back to Gelfand. And then uh, many people, uh, let's say in the last 10 years, like Bloch, Van Hove, Kerr, Duran, Weinzier, they have all um, worked in a similar direction. But for instance, a, a full uh, identification of L loop graphs, uh, I mean, of uh, arbitrary loop graphs, was done in these first two papers uh, that I cite here. And the, um, <coughs> you see, there's one, something which is a little strange. If you look at string theory, you would expect that maybe higher loop graphs go uh, with the genus of a Riemann surface. Uh, so they go more, so to say, in this direction, in higher and higher genus. Um, <coughs> and, uh, and this, uh, so to say, <coughs> uh, this is a, uh, an, uh, a charting of um, algebraic varieties that was, uh, <coughs> that was uh, um, uh, done by Kodaira. So basically, he says, uh, if the thing are Fano, then they are very simple. They are finitely many, and so on. And, uh, and the uh, Calabiao case is, so to say, the critical one. And beyond that is very bad, uh, what we understand of the, uh, of the varieties. And so to say, it's a little lucky that now uh, this higher loop, uh, at least for this graph, go just in the dimension and not in, uh, in increasing the genus. So that is um, one of the upshot of that. Um, but here is a more, um, a little bit more um, complete uh, table of what I said. Uh, so far, so the maximal cut Feynman integral is, uh, is related to a period integral in a geometry. So in this case, this is just this complete intersection. And then uh, the homogeneous Gaussmannian connection of that one determines these periods in a way. And uh, you can also turn on a strongly uh, <coughs> motivic way. So basically, let's go first to the physics thing. So, the, so this is the actual, uh, the actual Feynman graph is then a chain integral, also epsilon de, uh, uh, deformed, and it corresponds to an inhomogeneous Gaussmannian connection. And uh, <coughs> I had also, of course, mathematicians stress the groups that act on this situation. And the most important groups on this picker fuchs equation is certainly the monodromy group. And it's important whether they are irreducible or irreducible. But if you pick a particular fiber, then you can also define the action of the Galois group. And uh, then you can, uh, you can uh, also ask the question whether they're irreducible representations that you have attractor points and stuff. And, and it's also they have a notion of extended motives for these things that are uh, the, uh, the real Feynman graphs. That, of course, gives only information about uh, the values of the periods, or in this case, the Feynman graphs, at the special, at the special fi uh, um, fiber in the family. So uh, in physics terms, at the very particular value of m and p, if you like. So, uh, <clears throat> so this is a general picture. So I repeat a little bit what a Calabiao uh, manifold is. So, of course, it's a complex, <coughs> um, a compact uh, manifold of complex dimension n that has uh, two forms, a Kähler form and, uh, and a holomorphic three form. And uh, <coughs> the, uh, this uh, uh, condition that you have this unique holomorphic uh, non-vanishing three form is equivalent to the fact that uh, the first churn class is zero, or as Yao has proven, that the, there exists the Ricci flat metric and also that the holonomy is SUN, and, uh, and uh, then it has two covariant constant spinners, and that's why string three mostly like Calabiao, uh, but uh, I don't care too much because I, I need anyway uh, the Calabiao in any dimension. Uh, uh, so for me, it's more, uh, the trivial remark is more useful that this is a, a generalization of an elliptic curve in a sense, because in a, uh, for, if you write down an elliptic curve here, I wrote down the Legendre curve, uh, then, uh, <clears throat> then you have this omega just given in coordinates by this formula, and the, uh, so this is the holomorphic one zero form, and the small omega is uh, just the volume form. So uh, <clears throat> we also know from string theory that this uh, C equal one condition is very easy to control. So for instance, we can take the cubic in, uh, <clears throat> in P2, and then we get here uh, an elliptic curve in the Weierstrass form, and this has one modulus. Uh, so, uh, <clears throat> so that would be um, would be 
the easiest situation, but uh, this can be mocked up immediately. So if you uh, take for the Fano variety uh, with positive churn class, you take, um, let's say, a toric variety, and then you consider a section of the, um, <coughs> of the canonical bundle, then you get in, uh, in dimension, um, <coughs> Uh, in dimension uh, one, so this would be elliptic curves, you get 16 types of elliptic curves. They have families which different torsion, um, uh, generic torsion, and then the, uh, if you do this for K3, you get this many. If you do this for case, uh, for Calabiao, Kreuzer, and Skarke found this many, and a good estimate uh, for four folds would be this uh, number. So it's a, there are certainly many, many uh, uh, Calabiao, and uh, so far we, I mean, my question was a little bit uh, how, uh, what a big variety of Calabiao would appear in Feynman graphs. Is this, uh, is this always the same? Or <clears throat> and and uh, so that is was, uh, one question. Another way of, uh, of doing them is branch covers over this Fano variety and fold. Then it has to uh, be branched at a, certain, um, <clears throat> uh, at a certain class of the canonical bundle. And then, then it's also a Calabiao manifold, and we see this in the example of the fishnet graphs. Then uh, this complete in the section that I already have here on the board, uh, that uh, has, is a Calabiao if the degrees of the hypersurface fulfill a certain um, uh, uh, constraint. And then, of course, we have many, many other ones. Uh, for instance, um, <coughs> uh, we can take Grassmannians for the ambient space of large varieties, et cetera, et cetera. So there are many of these um, um, of, of examples that we can po uh, potentially identify with Feynman graph. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, what is more structurally interesting is, uh, is these periods, because our claim is that at least the maximal cut integral is the period of a Calabiao. And uh, <clears throat> so the period is uh, this pairing here um, uh, between uh, homology uh, and cohomology. And uh, what is also very important is what I called, uh, uh, I mean, they, uh, they, they can be viewed as a map from uh, the homologic to the cohomology group to by this integration. Uh, so this defines the period. And what is also very important is that you have another bilinear, the intersection pairing, which uh, usually uh, is defined over Z, but you can also do this of over algebraic extension. And sometimes this plays a role. So uh, <clears throat> if n is odd, so if the dimension of the Calabiao is odd, then you can make this intersection, uh, then this intersection is, is, um, pairing is uh, symplectic. And if n is even, then you have to think a little bit what it is. So for instance, for K3, it is written like this. So, uh, <clears throat> so then you can pick uh, these cycles, the A and B cycles. And um, this is an SP4 choice here. I make them intersect uh, like it would be compatible with SP4. But the good thing is, of course, this is uh, all already uh, visible in the elliptic curve. Uh, so here are the periods, uh, <clears throat> and here are, uh, here's the period integral, and uh, here is, um, is uh, the second cohomology uh, element, which you can represent by a meromorphic form of this uh, second kind, and then you get uh, these elliptic integrals are basically the things that I'm talking about and generalizing. And uh, <clears throat> this is well studied because uh, these things solve Kepler's problem, and it's also well studied in, the, in 1881 that they fulfill a linear differential equation. So for instance, for the Lagrange cur uh, uh, Legendre curve that I give before, it's this uh, differential equation of first order, uh, sorry, second order because we have so, uh, two periods. So this all generalizes, but what is the decisive structure, which also plays a big role in the following of the talk uh, for uh, Calabiaus, is uh, that uh, there is um, a <coughs> uh, potential for uh, the, uh, uh, there is a Kähler potential that is, can be written like that. So there is one uh, um, real Riemann bilinear relation, uh, which says that this uh, is uh, always positive, and it can also be interpreted as the calibrated volume. Uh, or, uh, of the color uh, and uh, <clears throat> and it also gives the uh, metric uh, on the Weil Patterson um, uh, the Weil Patterson metric on the modelized space of the color which will be just these physical parameters 
And uh, <clears throat> the, the second bilinear is this, uh, is this one where you don't take complex conjugation. So here you take complex conjugation, get a real quantity. Here you don't do the complex conjugation, but you take derivatives of the period. And it's clear by consideration of type that this is zero if k is less than the dimension of the manifold. And then uh, you get actually um, <clears throat> an, uh, a rational function in z in this complex parameter if uh, k is equal n. And, uh, <clears throat> and you can also see that, uh, I mean, here is, is essentially the, the, the justification of this formula why it only kicks in if uh, k is equal n, because then you reach, so to say, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, from the n0 form, the 0 n form. So these are the uh, two structures that you have on the Calabiao. So, the uh, question is a little bit what they mean uh, for family, uh, for uh, Feynman integrals. So let me uh, uh, sort of um, say this for one parameter families. So the f this um, <coughs> second um, um, equation, that I, this was the holomorphic equation, says that the uh, one parameter family operator is actually uh, uh, self-adjoint. And that is this property. And you check that, for instance, the differential operator for the, uh, um, for the Legendre curve is self-adjoint, is one of these examples. And, uh, and you also uh, have here uh, this C again that is a, is a rational function. <coughs> so this is, the, uh, this is how you can compute, actually, the C by a differential equation up to a multiplicative constant. <coughs> And, uh, and, uh, and, and one very important second, uh, second consequence of this uh, um, uh, holomorphic equation is that the Fronskian is, uh, the inverse of the Fronskian is actually, again, uh, a linear in the period itself. Also, the Fronskian is, of course, the derivative of the periods. And if you take the inverse of the periods, it has all rights to be of high transcendentality, but it's not. It actually ha uh, has a, is a rational function uh, times, uh, so these are all rational functions, times the intersection form, which is just a constant matrix, uh, times uh, the, uh, the original front skin. So it's, it not raises somehow the transcendentality. And that is very important because uh, <clears throat> if, you, if you do, for instance, um, we have seen uh, that, uh, that um, uh, these uh, these uh, Feynman integrals are actually solutions to the inhomogeneous differential equation. And of course, if you now solve that by the variation of constant uh, method, then you need the inverse of the Fronskian. And so you get just iterated integrals from Calab of Calabiao periods and their di differentials. So that is very, very important and also very similar, like you get differential equations for, uh, for the elliptic curves. <clears throat> so that's a good uh, property. And then also you can uh, uh, um, write the Gauss-Mannin connection in a, in a preferred way. This is basically the generalization of the previous statement to arbitrary many co coordinates. So you have, uh, you have uh, this, uh, this principle of, um, of doing iterated integrals for finding the inhomogeneous solution also generalizes to this case. So this is just what I said, uh, namely that in the variation of constant procedure, you get these iterated integrals of periods and the derivative of the periods itself. And, uh, and then the special um, form of the Gauss-Mannin connection also implies that if you put in the epsilon parameter, I will explain this um, more carefully later, then you also get inter iterated integrals of periods. So the, um, <clears throat> the, now I come to, uh, to the second um, part of the talk. Um, <clears throat> namely the, um, uh, the um, <clears throat> uh, Calabiaus that play a role in, uh, in systems with Youngian symmetries. And of course here the driving question is a little bit uh, what is necessary to solve uh, non-trivial quantum field series. And uh, in the original state that was asked for n equal 4 super young melts in the RDS-CFT correspondence and the people have found that it has a Youngian symmetry um, and, uh, <clears throat> and uh, you expect basically that maybe by the young symmetries that all the amplitudes of the series can eventually be calculated. And, uh, and uh, indeed, uh, for a, a little bit a simplified model of that, uh, that turns out to be true. So, uh, <clears throat> so the question is whether all, uh, whether all um, <clears throat> observables follow from the symmetries or not. 
And uh, <clears throat> as I said, I don't uh, do this in the original model. That is, for now, too complicated for me. So I do it in an integral uh, deformation, which pres preserves this Youngian uh, symmetry. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> in, this, um, in this case, I can consider a simpler series. And um, I can, in particular, do this in any dimensions. So let's look at this fishnet series. So this you can consider also in four dimensions for the original super young mills problem. But uh, here, if you, uh, let's say, are in four dimensions, uh, then uh, the natural, um, uh, the natural um, weight of the propagators uh, is actually uh, one half, like for the scalar. And then uh, in two dimensions, it would be one half. So these are the conformal choices. And uh, the Youngian symmetry is an extension of the conformal uh, symmetry. So you need a conformal series. Uh, and uh, what is, uh, what is uh, why this theory has so much been considered is that they, um, they, um, they um, um, have the uh, extension of the, they keep the extension of the Youngian symmetry. And uh, another generalization is, uh, is one which cubic interaction, you see the other one, they had actually quartic interaction here. Um, uh, so it, uh, I go. So this one had quartic interaction, and the next one has cubic interaction. And, uh, <clears throat> and then if you want to make it conformal, you have to choose the propagator weights uh, to, to be 3 half um, at, each ver at each vertex. And, uh, <clears throat> and why was this, uh, so to say, considered anyway? Because the natural dimension is d minus 1 over 2, and then, uh, <clears throat> and then the valency uh, for the natural uh, um, um, for the natural series in six, four, and three dimension have to be six, four, and three, and uh, that's why these uh, six, four, and three series are very interesting. I don't consider the six series so much because as it turns out they are related to the three series in a way. But uh, now I want to uh, uh, I want to get Calabriao manifolds from uh, uh, let's say a series with uh, three uh, vertices, valence three. And I put them all in the lattice. So these are the interest, uh, two cases I really discussed. This I will not so much discuss. But the idea is now, how do you get a graph in this uh, theory? Uh, and uh, and uh, basically, you, you uh, draw a curve. And uh, then you get uh, this kind of, um, of uh, um, Feynman uh, integral. But this is an in integral in the uh, position space. So these are positions. And uh, these are external positions uh, of the graph. These are uh, in internal positions you want to integrate over. So this is, uh, <coughs> for instance, in the uh, momentum uh, representation, it, it, it has as many loops as you have vertexes in the position, uh, in the position graph, because uh, the momentum graph is the dual graph. So this is a thing uh, I want to uh, calculate. And uh, finally, it turns out that you can associate the Calabriao to this problem already. And uh, the Calabriao that I want to associate it, um, <clears throat> it turns out to be a multi-covering. And I explain you now how I associate the Calabriao. So first of all, as we have seen, we do this in two dimensions. Um, so I adapt the propagator weight so that this is a conformal field theory in two dimensions with a Youngian symmetry. And then uh, I get uh, these uh, these uh, propagators here, and these are the ones, the internal ones, which go between two internal uh, edges, and then these are the ones which uh, connect an internal to an out, uh, <coughs> external edge. And the function eventually will depend, of course, on these uh, external um, uh, positions. And uh, as I said, at each vertex, now I have to fulfill this. You can uh, also uh, consider a <coughs> more general series, which have different valency vertex. But I will uh, now consider for now uh, things where the valency of all vertices is equal. And uh, <clears throat> now, how do I associate a Calabriao to this? So uh, basically, we are go doing this in two dimensions. And the, uh, the propagator weights are given by this uh, here uh, for the uh, quartic tiling 1 fourth, And for the, uh, <coughs> for the um, uh, triagonal tiling, we have this propagator weights. And now I sort of uh, engineer the Calabriao so that its period becomes the integral I'm interested in. And how do I do that? So I take, uh, <clears throat> remember that we have, uh, we have um, as many vertices as internal points, and they all live now in a P1. So I take as the base space, the final variety of P1 to the uh, number of vertices. 
and then uh, <clears throat> I uh, write down a polynomial that is precisely branched at, uh, at the right degree of the, uh, of, the, um, <clears throat> uh, of the canonical class. So I want to have such a polynomial, and uh, it is branched at this thing, but it's easy to see for these uh, triagonal and, uh, and quartic lattices that that is just the right, uh, the right degree uh, to be uh, the canonical class. So we have this P1s, and then we have uh, here the hyperplane section, then it's KB, and you see this formula that makes it the Calabiao is precisely fulfilled with this choice of propagators. So it is a Calabiao, albeit it is a very singular Calabiao. So why I'm doing that? I'm doing that because I know that uh, the people in uh, this young um, uh, they want the amplitude. The amplitude is given by this. So basically, they want to make an integral over all these internal legs, and then they want to uh, uh, consider this integral. And uh, this turns out to be uh, up to a conformal factor, also an integral that is uh, defined in the, um, in the cross ratios, which are, so to say, conformally uh, invariant. And all the, uh, so to say, conformal representation is given in this prefactor. But the thing is, when I do that, uh, and I defined my polynomial like that, then the holomorphic series zero form has this form, and it's given here. And you see that this uh, piece is just omega wedge omega bar. So in other words, I have a, a Calabiao uh, so that my, uh, my uh, bilinear of periods calculates the amplitude that, uh, that they want. And uh, <clears throat> now uh, we have a couple of observations or claims. I mean, the first I have actually proven that I can associate a Calabiao variety to each of these uh, MGs whose periods uh, determine the amplitude. Uh, then the second one is, uh, of course, also relatively trivial. The amplitude in this, uh, in this, um, in this young uh, symmetries, this fissured amplitudes uh, or integrals, they're actually more like amplitudes. They have to be monodromy invariant. And you see, uh, this is a monodromy invariant combination of the periods. So it cannot be much more uh, than that uh, 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 if the monodromy is irreducible and it turns out uh, <clears throat> that uh, this is the only single valued expression that you can write down. So it is actually the volume of the Calabiao is the amplitude in the fishnet graph. So that's uh, it's a nice uh, thing. Uh, but uh, you can ask, is this uh, sort of, say, a more general principle, or is this, uh, is this just by chance? Uh, look, for instance, at n, uh, at n equal 4 series in d equal 4. Then you can look at the four-point uh, amplitude and uh, you, it's given by this. It's very similar. You have external legs, four of them. So in this case, the graph is just a, uh, a cross. And uh, you have four external um, um, points. And then you have a couple of uh, conformal factor. And then uh, the thing which becomes the volume, in the case of the Calabiao, becomes the bloch wigner dialogarism, which is, of course, a volume of a uh, tetrahedron in a hyperbolic three space. And you can more or less do the same thing that I did for the Calabiaus. You can write down a differential equation so that this e to the k uh, that I defined previously from the periods is the bloch wigner dialogarism. So that fits uh, very, uh, very nicely. So there's a more general uh, principle uh, that these amplitudes uh, uh, evaluate to volumes. Let me say something about the role of the Youngian symmetry in this construction. <laughs> So, so the Youngian symmetry in two dimensions splits, and it makes the problem much easier. So, uh, so first of all, it splits in two, uh, in a holomorphic and an anti-holomorphic part, and, uh, and the holomorphic part is, is just uh, um, generated by what you are know from conformal field three in two dimensions by these operators, and then I have to, in addition, create the Youngian symmetry for that. And, um, <clears throat> And it turns out uh, that, of course, these are operators which act on these external vertices, and uh, and they somehow uh, um, act on the on the amplitudes. And they have to, if the amplitude is invariant under this Youngian symmetry, they have to annihilate this amplitude. And you have to uh, take, uh, in addition, into account the um, permutation symmetries of the graph. So you get actually uh, what we call the Youngian of the graph. And this annihilates uh, the amplitude. And uh, now uh, the, sec uh, the next claim that we uh, have proven in many cases is that these Youngian symmetries 
are actually equivalent to the Gaussmannian connection to the, of the Calabi-Yau that, that I associated with them. So you have, uh, if you have a Calabi-Yau, you get something which is called the picker uh, fuchs differential ideal, and, the, um, uh, and these uh, Jungian symmetries precisely generate this picker fuchs differential ideal. So it is, in this sense, uh, equivalent to the, uh, to the um, <coughs> Gaussmannian connection uh, that the periods are flat. And, and of course, by this uh, token, you can, uh, you can calculate the period up to linear combination. Uh, and then uh, you ask yourself, OK, I mean, now I have to build this monotromy invariant combination. So I have to then uh, calculate the SP4Z monotromy. And, um, and, um, and uh, find this, uh, this combination of the period, which is the Youngian. And uh, <coughs> this is fixed um, when the, uh, when the uh, monodromies are irreducible up to a factor. If this is irreducible, you can have many factors. But if it's uh, uh, irreducible, as it is in these examples we looked at, then it's just fixed. So in other words, um, <coughs> uh, the symmetries and the, and the idea that you have to construct a sim single valued combination uh, give the amplitude. There is nothing uh, that uh, you need in addition. And also, uh, as in the Feynman graph community, you can ask yourself the question, can I do this integral maybe not numerically? And you can, uh, but, uh, but it's, uh, it's, it's very complicated because this integral has an, has an integrand that has poles from the singularities of the Calabi-Yau. And, uh, and any numerical integration program will take extremely long. So it's much better to do a solve a differential equation than to do an integral as usual in this case. So there are also some uh, more interest, uh, some uh, other things that uh, maybe highlight my, uh, <coughs> the fact that I uh, emphasize so much the, uh, the, um <coughs> the motive. So if you, uh, there is a symmetry that is clear from the Youngian symmetries, namely, that is, a, is called the star triangle relation. So for instance, if you take this original thing that I had here, uh, then this would be a Calabi-Yau threefold, but a very singular one, which in addition has a set three automorphism because this is a triple covering of uh, three P, P ones. And if you do the star, star triangle relation, you get actually a one dimensional object. So in these examples, uh, you get a, uh, the motive of a singular Calabi-Yau is actually equivalent to a motive of a certain Picard curve. And you might wonder, why does it work? And it works because if you do um, conjugate the periods, then there are periods which are invariant and not invariant. And in this uh, process, so here is the Hodge diamond of the, of the, uh, the Calabi-Yau threefold. So this is the 3-0 form. This is the 0-3 form. And then I grouped it a little bit into uh, periods which are invariant and, and non-invariant. And if you do the star triangle relation, then you group these points differently. So you basically shift them. And, uh, and at the end, you end up uh, with, uh, with, uh, with the Hodge diamond uh, of, uh, or with the middle cohomology of an this Picard curve, which has uh, a 3, 1, and 3, uh, 3, uh, 1, 0, and 3, 0, 1 uh, periods. So you can uh, actually understand that the, uh, these two variations of hot structures are uh, equivalent. <coughs> so uh, let me come to the um, uh, application to, uh, <coughs> to QFT. So you might wonder why I consider this graph. So I can consider this graph again. So it turns out uh, that uh, in a way that I hope uh, you understand that this graph is actually not irrelevant uh, because it has a funny topology. It actually does appear in a as simple broad, uh, uh, the, the three loop version of it appears in a, a simple problem as calculating the self energy of the photon uh, to in three loops. So then it, uh, these, uh, these, uh, these periods actually appear. That would be periods of a K3. So how, uh, <clears throat> how is this? So first of all, one has to um, <clears throat> see that, uh, I mean, that this graph here leads to this complete intersection, Calabiao. But this is not for all graphs that you can look at. So if you take another graph, there will be not a single Calabiao associated to this graph. Uh, so in this case, for instance, uh, this is not, uh, this is called the ice cone graph. There is not a single uh, Calabi-Yau that gives you uh, 
the maximal cut or whatever, uh, actually you cannot do a maximal cut, which has to do with this fact, uh, is the, the, whose uh, periods are di directly related to physical properties of this graph. So rather what the people do is, uh, so how they um, uh, um, <coughs> obtain in the Feynman graph community this an analog of the Gaussmannian connection is as follows. So they take, uh, <coughs> they take this um, graph and uh, they uh, uh, write propagators for all the propagators they see in the graph. And they take arbitrary exponential to all these propagators. And they do, of course, all these propagators uh, contain k uh, because they, um, or let's say the internal momentum they contain, um, <coughs> uh, I should have uh, called this k. And then, um <coughs> and then this, is, uh, this is the graph. And, uh, and they write this, this integral. And, of and they're also not specific about what is the dimension of this graph, so they are, uh, this can be also kept um, um, uh, arbitrary at this moment. And then, uh, <coughs> as I said before, they, uh, they uh, um, uh, do a couple of, um, of um, Lorentz invariant quantities for the external x, so for instance, uh, uh, products of uh, the momentum, mass squares, and so on, and then they uh, decide on how many ratios of these uh, set i this uh, depends, and uh, this will be the uh, the moduli of my problem, <coughs> and then uh, <coughs> they uh, they um <coughs> they uh, do this uh, this exponential of the propagators and actually also this uh, dimension in a lattice. Uh, so these are the uh, exponents of the propagator they do this in a lattice. And they consider uh, s such uh, the master integrals where this is now, this lattice is fixed. Uh, and uh, and uh, they, look, uh, they look like this. And then they have a very simple uh, uh, exact form that they can build from this master integrals. And that is this one. So the, the thing is this one is exact. So then you get zero. And you can do now partial integration. And this partial integration is exactly the thing that uh, Griffiths does if he does uh, the reduction method uh, to derive the Picard-Fuchs equation. So it's actually the analog of that. And uh, there are some deep theorems. So, there, so for instance, uh, there is a finite region in the lattice that contains all the non-vanishing master integrals. And uh, then you can, uh, in this basis of master integral, you can express the derivative with respect to the set k as linear combination with rational uh, coefficients by these IPP relations. So you get, get something like the, uh, the Gauss-Mannian connection from that. And uh, of course, uh, the master integrals uh, are sort of, uh, or the integrals of the master integrals are sort of what they call the graph cohomology. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a cohomology of the graph. And it's basically the cohomology of a Calabiao for the, uh, for these uh, banana graph. But in general, it's more complicated. So, so this is, so to say, the dictionary. So the integration by parts, this corresponds, the IPP is called, for, it's for integration by parts relations. Uh, this corresponds to the Griffiths reduction method, and then a complete set of IPP relations. This corresponds to the p complete Picard-Fuchs ideal in the case of this banana graph. Uh, so that is um, very powerful. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, as I said, there is, so to say, a finite uh, region in the lattice that the all your integrals, master integrals, are in. And then uh, you take this, uh, this master integrals and you write your differential equation like that, where this is the connection matrix of the Gauss-Mannin. <clears throat> and now, uh, <laughs> you see, the epsilon is still in, because I also had this also depend on epsilon, because the dimension is arbitrary. And uh, <clears throat> now, uh, you need a better basis in order to uh, extract it order in order for epsil in epsilon, and you do this by rotating the uh, master integral and the connection. So this is a complicated step, but you can get better and better. And the best one is if the, uh, if the connection, and uh, <clears throat> I don't think there's a theorem that this is achievable, but in many examples, you can just achieve it. So then uh, there is this form. And now you see what happens here very uh, nicely. So for instance, uh, you see here a block and this block acts on this period, and this block is in general a period integral of a, Cala uh, a Gaussmannian connection of a Calabiao. But then there are, uh, so to say, subgraphs where some of this exponential were zero. These are subgraphs, 
And, uh, and you see th th these also occur and then they uh, appear uh, in, the, in the connection. So for instance, for these periods, this, uh, this uh, line or this uh, couple of lines give an inhomogeneous differential equation. So the, uh, the inhomogeneities appear in this, uh, in this uh, approach as the subgraphs of, uh, of, the, uh, of the graph that you are considering. And that is also the reason that the uh, banana graph is so... Uh, is so nice and simple because if you cut any of these propagators, then it becomes a tadpole, and there is no momentum uh, 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 interval to be done because it's just fixed by the momentum con con conservation. So that's why the reason that this is so, so easy. But on the other hand, you can say that the banana graph appears in any of the other graphs that you wish to consider of any topology, and that's the reason that, for instance, in the self-energy of the photon, you get these uh, Calabi-Yau periods if you try to solve them. So this is, uh, is, uh, is very nice. So in this case here, uh, <coughs> you uh, see that uh, these, um, these um, blocks uh, that I indicate that, uh, that you can read off if you, uh, if you achieve this epsilon form with the diagonalization are, are, um, are Gaussmannian connections of Calabi-Aus. And also from the ice cone, uh, ice cone graph is actually, uh, uh, is actually pretty much the right blocks because these two blocks are the banana graph at z and the banana graph at 1 over z. So it's somehow clear that the banana graph is in this ice cone graph in this way. Um, so <clears throat> let me summarize what I said in the second part because I come shortly to the last part. So, well, anyway, the maximal cut integrals, uh, they um, correspond uh, often to these uh, periods of calabi -Yau. Uh, then the dimensional ratios are the unobstructed moduli of the Calabi-Yau. The integration by parts relation is kind of like the Griffiths reduction, which also apply, explains why these Calabi-Yau motifs come up over and over again. And then the integral of the master, the uh, integral basis of the master integral is basically the middle cohomology, and then the complete set of differential equation you get in this form. Uh, in, by, uh, by uh, putting them, uh, so to say, uh, considering the subgraphs uh, as, as the inhomogeneous pieces. So that is the uh, next example, and, uh, and that, so to say, shows that Calabi-Yau's uh, periods uh, uh, and uh, their iterated integrals will appear uh, really in, in calculations that you have to do for the LHC, because uh, uh, or, for, or for that matter, to calculate the magnetic moment of the electron or something like that. So it's really like, uh, like that. Uh, and another application is, uh, is, word line, is this word line uh, approach to, I mean, it's a, it's a quantum field theory approach to a, a classical problem in scattering of black holes. So it's a little stupid, in fact, uh, if you think about it, uh, that you... Uh, uh, that you solve this by a quantum gravity formalism, but, uh, but it's, it works and is, uh, is, um, is very, uh, is the only formalism that gives results. So basically the problem is you, you scatter uh, two black holes and don't think about supersymmetric black holes, just ordinary black holes, and, and you want to know uh, let's say um, the one. Uh, what is the uh, what is the, uh, the the gravitational waves that's emitted in this process, and what is so to say the impact parameter doing? Uh, I mean, what is the the scattering angle at the end of the day? So what you do is a kind of a word sheet, um, uh, a word line approach. You write down this action, and you perturb this action uh, a little bit from the flat space, in particular you. Uh, you uh, perturb the metric from the flat space, and then <coughs> you uh, calculate uh, from the initial data, in particular this impact parameter, uh, you want to calculate uh, how the momentum changes, and you get for this momentum change uh, something that is expandable in the weak gravitational uh, coupling, and, uh, and an expression that you can uh, calculate in this uh, swinger keldish formalism uh, by a Feynman graph expansion. <coughs> And the upshot <coughs> is that uh, if you uh, do this now in the 4 p.m. approximation, then it's uh, g to the 4, it is, so it's a, it's a certain degree in the gravitational coupling, then you uh, look at these Feynman graphs, and, uh, and what you see is uh, there's a Feynman graph of a K3. Very nice. So, uh, and, and it, so to say, happens that this 
is a Feynman graph of a K3. Since any K3 uh, factorizes uh, one parameter K3, remember there's only one parameter in this problem, but any uh, period of a K3 is actually is a symmetric product of elliptic curves. And therefore, uh, people have not, so to say, seen they thought it was elliptic curves, but in fact, it's a, it's a K3. And, uh, <clears throat> and then we looked in the uh, 5 p.m. approximation, and uh, we're hoping to find Calabi-Yau threefolds. And uh, indeed, I mean, you see, if you look at this graph now, uh, sorry, uh, this graph, <clears throat> so um, then you find, uh, uh, I mean, you do, basically the formalism is very much uh, like uh, by this IPP relation. So, you, uh, so we found, uh, moti uh, we found, so to say, the Gauss-Mannin connection, and the Gauss-Mannin connection of that was the Gauss-Mannin connection of, uh, of um, <coughs> uh, four quadrics in P, P uh, <coughs> uh, thank you, uh, in P7, and, uh, <coughs> And then we looked uh, at further uh, uh, Calabi, uh, calabi -Yau that appears. So we found there's a further calabi -Yau, which was found by a different group, but there's also a very interesting, finally there's exactly the K3 that, whose Picker-Fuchs equation Aperi uh, used to prove the irrationality of Zeta 3. So there come very f funny uh, calabi -Yaus in this problem. And uh, <clears throat> I have not a good overview of what kind of... Uh, I mean, what, uh, what kind of complexities is in this in this Calabi-Yau uh, that you find in these uh, calculations? But I can say that um, <clears throat> that the uh, basically in every problem of this perturbative uh, problem uh, in quantum field theory or its application here to um, to um, um <clears throat> gravitational um, scattering, you find uh, period motives of Calabi-Yau. And, uh, and if you want to express the, uh, the um, if you want to get the answer uh, in terms of uh, transcendental functions, you have to take, uh, this will be Calabi-Yau periods plus iterated integrals of Calabi-Yau periods. So it's a very well-defined uh, class of, uh, of transcendental function, which seems to uh, quite generally uh, um, um, govern these problems in quantum field theory and also in this uh, gravitational uh, problem. <clears throat> so um, maybe I should uh, end then. And uh, so the the um, <clears throat> conclusion is uh, is sort of okay. I mean, this Calabi-Yau periods they appeared in in physics in the Kepler problem uh, very early, and uh, and uh, <clears throat> and sort of uh, physics and mathematics has developed, of course. And on the way, we have seen all kinds of amazing things about these Calabi-Yau periods. I mean, in particular in in uh, respect with uh, enumerative geometry uh, <coughs> uh, that uh, come from string three, but I also have seen uh, things in arithmetic geometry on this Calabi-Yau periods. Uh, and also in this respect, you can say that the Calabi-Yau periods are the natural, uh, so to say, <coughs> uh, um, next generation of elliptic curves. I mean, because uh, they also have modularities in their, in their hasseweil zeta function, et cetera, et cetera. And so it leads uh, more and more up, and uh, these, uh, these periods uh, still play a role for a reason that, uh, that is, uh, I can explain formally, but uh, w what is the deep reason, I don't know. Uh, so now they, they solve problems like uh, particle physics or scattering of, uh, of, of black holes. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> We have plenty of time for questions. Come on. Thanks for an interesting talk. Um, so you're relating a particular loop to particular dimension Calabia. Yes. You generally get compact Calabia. Yes. The fact and the that the last example is just this one. Yes. Uh, the fact that the Calabia are believed to be finite in number, even though you're getting a particular regions of moduli space or complex structure of them, the fact that there are a finite number of Calabia. What does it translate to in terms of complexity of the loops? Are there relation to their finite number of good quantum field theories? Because at each loop, there's only a finite number of Calabia. And if so, can you have a bound on the number of Calabia by studying that question? What is the relation with finiteness? I mean, 
<clears throat> I could imagine that for a given quantum field theory and doing this particular reduction to the subgraphs and so on, since there is not an arbitrary complication in the topology of these graphs because it's just given by the standard model, that then uh, the Calabi-Haus will be finite. And I suspect actually they are very uh, lame in a sense. Not many types of Calabi-Haus. So I was already happy that in this gravitational problem, I found a Calabiao, like this one that was uh, considered by Boykers for this upper E problem, that's more complicated. But this, this Calabiao is, is the simplest one that Candelas would have written down. And it appears over and over and over. So I, I, I think uh, if you ask the question very general, let's say for a renormalizable quantum field theory, maybe uh, you can uh, point to a class of Calabiaos, but uh, it's of course a very complicated question. So you don't expect to get all? I don't expect to get all. I see. And is there anything connected in these, at least in these simple examples, to things other than periods, or is just the periods that arise? No, as I said, I mean, uh, what uh, appears more typically is, 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 the, is the relative periods that we No, no, I know, but the... basically integrals over some chains or something. Are there anything, other, like, for example, the, in the topological string, we have these higher loop quantum amplitudes. Are there anything more fancy? Good question. I mean, I believe, I mean, if you think about the topological string, how we solve it today, we don't solve it by Feynman graphs. I think you were very proud to solve it by Feynman graphs. But today, we solve it by its symmetries. And this is more in the spirit of this master integrals. We, we uh, combined blocks of certain modular structures because we, com we understand that, uh, that, uh, that uh, these, uh, these blocks have to have certain symmetries. And in this sense, it becomes, instead of a, a 2 a, a g factorial growth, it becomes a polynomial growth the way that we, uh, that we solve the topological string. And actually, it's very interesting. In a sense, you can also say in the topological string, if you look at the propagator, the propagator of the quintic is actually uh, the Calabiao of a four, uh, period of a fourfold. So it's, 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 it's if, if, uh, if these uh, terms that you get are also belonging to higher dimensional Calabiao in the topological string. So it's actually a good analogy in this sense. Um, OK. Any other questions? Yes, in the back over there. Thanks for the very nice talk. Um, that last family of K3 surfaces that you had uh, is naturally written as an elliptic vibration. Um, I'm wondering if you've seen other vibration structures on the Calabias that you've written down, and if those vibration structures tell you anything about relationships between the amplitudes. Yeah, that's a good, uh, good question, but uh, I can say it's almost trivial. So uh, <clears throat> remember, this is, a, is a, a complete intersection, and for instance, the elliptic curve would be just uh, take P1, 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 and take uh, one, one, one. So this is the elliptic curve version of this uh, thing, and it actually corresponds to the sunset graph. Now what you do is uh, you can, for instance, uh, view any of these parameters uh, also as the base. And if you, uh, if you take the mass to zero, then you get a decompactification limit. And of course, you can do this in all ways. So it's a vibration with respect to all of these bases. So it's an elliptic multi-fibration, or let's say, uh, then you also have K3 over P1 and Calabiao uh, threefold over P1 and so on. So, so of course, it's reflected in, the, in a very trivial uh, sense in this, in this uh, combinatoric of this graph. And, and of course, what, what, one thing which is not to be underestimated is the following fact. If you know what the geometry is, then uh, you have uh, from string theory the gamma class or gamma hat class formalism. So it's no, uh, no problem to write immediately down an uh, integral symplectic basis and identify what the period is. And that's very powerful. The people in the Feynman graph community didn't know that, what to write down. And, uh, and in this sense, um, it's, uh, it's a real uh, contribution uh, to, uh, to what they are doing. Thank you. OK, one question here, please. Uh, 
So I uh, I wanted to ask if if you also tried with toric hypersurface calabiaus or only for CCs. So I'm asking this because because this del Pezzo surfaces, uh, they, they are very common divisors of toric hypersurface calabiaus, but they don't appear in CCs very often. So it, so do you do you think that there could be a link to these uh, you know these? Yeah, I mean the, the, the thing is, for instance, you can write this problem also as uh, as toric hypersurface, and for this graph, the toric polyhedron would look like this. And, uh, and you see this is fine because you have uh, three automorphisms, so you can identify this with M1, M2, M3. But if you do the same thing in, f in uh, not in two dimension, but in four dimension, your toric polyhedron will have something like 18 uh, 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 variables. So mm -hmm. it turns out that the physical problem is a very small subslice. In this, uh, in this problem. And that's why we thought, okay, let's write down a Calabiao where it's not a subslice, where, but where it's naturally identified as modelized space. And you can actually, in this higher dimensional problems, you can, uh, you can single out the subslice by doing a, a transition on the Calabiao to this Calabiao. So basically, you, you, you realize that at this point, at the physical modelized space, the Calabiao is singular, you blow it up, and then you get this Calabiao. So, as I said, you should not, you should not uh, worry about how it's realized. You should not even worry it. Maybe, I don't know whether, this is the, uh, whether we are ripe for this uh, perspective. You should uh, maybe uh, view it as a Riemann-Hilbert problem. You give the monodromies and so on. Or you view it as a problem in Galois theory. But, uh, but the, uh, you can find the same motive of, and that's why I stress uh, the motive word, you can find the same motive in many geometric realizations. And, and of course, for the Feynman graphs, you don't care. Because as long as it gives you the answer, uh, you, you, you don't care so much about it. <coughs> um, so, okay. so yeah, whether you realize it first as a hypersurface in a toric variety or immediately like that, uh, the calculation is just simpler in this uh, way. Yeah, I, yeah, actually, my interest was like, because these CCs have very, very less number of, for example, say, distinct divisor topologies. For example, when we classified all these 8,000 uh, CCs yeah, examples, yeah. then we find uh, that there are I only mean, 11 yeah. which appears as a divisor of the coordinate uh, uh, d d divisor topology. But for uh, hypersurface in toric varieties, we have much more structure. So I was wondering whether, you, you know, when you go beyond CCs and start using toric hypersurfaces, then we have much more to, to play with. And maybe Maybe we could classify based on K3 vibration or say elliptic vibration and, and things like that. So I, I'm not yeah, sure. I mean, Maybe it is too too early for this I mean, approach. Uh, to as as far as the application to Feynman graph goes, the um, I mean we learn something about Calabiao, but the Calabiao that do appear are relatively easy. Uh, I have to admit. I mean this one that gives the irrationality of Zeta three is more or less the highlight. Um, <coughs> Any further question? Okay, don't see any, so let's thank again Albrecht for the inspiring talk. So we take a three minutes break before the uh, contributed talk session.